The last thing Cassandra Sainsbury ever imagined or wanted was to become Australia's best known overseas prisoner. It's an unwelcome label she's inherited from Chappelle Corby. But as she ponders an uncertain future in the overcrowded and filthy jail behind me, she also has plenty of time to reflect on her own stupidity. Why did she attempt to smuggle 5.8 kilos of cocaine out of Colombia? Since her arrest in April, we've heard plenty about Cassie Sainsbury, but we've heard nothing from Cassie Sainsbury until now. In the heart of Bogota sits the ugly and uninviting women's prison, El Buan Pastor. In English, it means the Good Shepherd, a nod to Colombia's love of Jesus Christ. But there's nothing good about this place. Not that it's obvious when Cassandra Sainsbury enters the room. The 22-year-old's welcoming smile... Cassandra. Hello. ...is as inappropriate for the location... <laughs> All right, thank you. ...as it is for her dire situation. Cassandra, how did it all happen? How does a young girl from the back blocks of rural South Australia end up in a Bogota prison? I just, I found myself in a bad situation and I suppose I couldn't find a way out. I was in a place where I didn't know who I could trust, who I could talk to, and so I sort of just went with what I was told to do. It's taken months of negotiations between 60 Minutes and Colombian authorities to get the all clear to sit down with Cassie. And face to face with her in a tiny and noisy prison meeting room, she says not only does she want to explain to Australia how she ended up here, but she also wants to apologise for what she's done. I'm sorry for the disrespect that I've caused to Colombia, to Australia, because obviously I don't want Australia portrayed as wanting cocaine, and I don't want Colombia portrayed as only having cocaine. That's the only reason why people come here. For me, I don't want anyone else in the situation because it's difficult, it's not easy. What, you're apologising to let people know how bad it is? I'm apologising because I didn't mean to cause any disrespect to anyone. I didn't willingly want to commit a crime, but at the same time, for me, I need to apologise because I don't want to come across as I'm OK with what's happened here, because I'm not OK with it. Is that part of the legal strategy or is that from the heart? That's from the heart. The legal strategy, I don't even know what that is. Cassandra Sainsbury became Cocaine Cassie when she was arrested at Bogota's El Dorado International Airport in April. She was stopped at the final immigration check, just a few steps from boarding a flight to London. Security screening detected almost six kilos of cocaine hidden inside 18 sets of headphones, which were locked in her suitcase. Cassie says she was unwittingly duped. Her original version of events is that she was caught up in this mess after applying for a loan through the website Craigslist. But she now says this all came about after she was offered a job as a legitimate international courier. At first, I, I didn't even know it was drugs. I came here, I was told that I was going to be basically transporting documents. You, you thought it was papers? Some sort of documents? Yes. What, as a personal courier or something like that? See, si, see, si. yes. Sorry, Spanish. <laughs> yes. How much did you stand to make? Uh, $10,000. Did some part of you think $10,000 plus airfares halfway around the world was a bit too good to be true? Yes, but I suppose I was at the point where I needed money, so... I thought, OK, I'll, I'll do it. But Cassie, in this day and age of fast couriers, Jet Express, and didn't you for one moment think, hang on a minute, this could be a bit sus? Yes, it, it did cross my mind, and I've said that it crossed my mind. It wasn't, but it was a point of, I suppose, I'll never know. And it was a point, like, I was just about to accept a job, but I had outstanding bills, I had everything, so I was sort of, 
I suppose I took the risk and uh, now I'm here, but it's a lesson learned, definitely. It sounds hard to believe, but Cassie says she accepted the job even though she had little idea who she was working for. She and her new boss only communicated via email and the occasional phone call. She had no way to verify who he was, nor, it seems, was she inclined to find out. How did they set it up? When I said OK, I basically, a week, a week and a half later, I received an itinerary. And the first one, I received three different itineraries. First one was to Brazil. And for me, no, I'm not going to Brazil. And then the second one was to London. I thought, OK, I like London, I want to go to London, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. And then the day that I was supposed to fly out, my itinerary has changed to Bogota. And for me, I had no idea where Bogota was. I mean, I Googled it and I came with Colombia, and that's when I was like, OK, Colombia can't necessarily be a great thing. And so, yeah, that's when... So you didn't back out at that stage? No. To get to Colombia, Cassie boarded a flight in Adelaide to Guangzhou, China. From there, she flew to Los Angeles and then on to Bogota. Who paid for the plane ticket? I don't know directly. What do you mean? I don't know the name. I mean, uh, OK, I don't know if the person's real. So there, there's a name on, on the itinerary, but I don't know if it's real, it could be fake. I don't know the person. When Cassie landed in Colombia, she was told to come and stay here, the Inter Bogota. It's a small hotel well away from the tourist strip, used mainly by local business people. This is where she says she met the mastermind behind the smuggling operation. And what did he say his name was? Uh, Angela. Angela. I didn't get a last name. He was very, very vague on details. Sort of, there was a few details. He sort of, he said he was, had politician relations to Brazil and everything else and that he was quite high up in politics. But other than that, I didn't spend a lot of time with him because I didn't feel comfortable. Did he say that he was the one who set this whole thing up? Yes. Okay. So as far as you were concerned, he's the kingpin? Mm -hmm. On her fourth day in Bogota, Cassie claims tensions rose between herself and the mystery man, Angelo, when it became clear she would be transporting drugs, not documents. And when things started to slowly, slowly unwind, and I started to say, you know, I don't want any part of this, because I didn't come here to do anything illegal, I didn't come here to risk my life. And I suppose I argued quite a lot with this situation, and I probably created it worse for myself. Within the next day, uh, I started looking for ways to get home. I started going to travel agents, I started find, trying to find ways to get home. And I received a very nasty phone call basically saying, what are you doing? Why are you there? And I just said, I'm going home. I said, I don't want any part of this. I'll find my own way home. What exactly uh, did this Angelo tell you? Basically told me that if I didn't go through and do the job and take the package, that my mum, my sister and my partner, they would be killed. If you believe Cassie, it's at this point things got out of control. She says she took Angelo's threats seriously because he supplied her with surveillance photos of her mother Lisa, sister Kayla and fiancé Scott back in Adelaide. I received a photo of Scott and a friend leaving the gym. I received a photo of my sister getting her youngest kid out of the car and I received a photo of my mum getting out of the car. And that's, that hit home quite hard, and that was when I was like, what do I do? All these photos, what were they, emails, or were they on? They were through WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Did he tell you that he had connections in Australia? Basically, that he has people working for him everywhere. Cassie says she was now trapped, and became even more frightened when Angelo came to her hotel room to pack her suitcase with cocaine. I didn't know exactly what was in, I didn't know, I didn't know it was headphones, I didn't know. I wasn't allowed to look, I wasn't allowed to touch, it was packed in my suitcase, it was locked and that was it. This same guy mm -hmm. then bought you a ticket to London mm -hmm. from here. 
I was told to basically follow through the flight plan, which was to go to Hong Kong um, and basically take it to a specific place. Okay. So the plan was to get off in Hong Kong and give the bags, the cocaine, to somebody else? So I was basically told to go to an address and a Colombian man would meet me there. He said, he's my friend, he's from Colombia, he's a Colombian man. That was, that was it. And when were they going to give you the $10,000? Uh, supposedly when they received the package. Little did Cassie realise that even before she checked in at Bogota Airport, attempting to leave the country with a suitcase full of cocaine, her complicated flight route and the method of payment had drawn the attention of the US Drug Enforcement Agency, which then tipped off its Colombian counterparts. Cassandra Sainsbury's attempt at smuggling drugs was over before it began. The security video, that moment that you were arrested, you don't look stressed or unduly worried. I was extremely worried. I think when I was first arrested, it didn't hit me. Obviously, I had handcuffs on, I was being searched, everything, but I suppose it hit me when I got back to the police station. That's when it was like hitting a brick wall. Officers uncovered the 5.8 kilos of cocaine with a street value of almost $2 million concealed in 18 sets of headphones. But when I was arrested, I think I sort of, I was in shock. And so... But, but hang on, you knew it was in your bag? Yes, but I didn't know exactly what was in, I didn't know. I didn't know it was headphones, I didn't know. Because I didn't know of the quantity, I didn't... I didn't know how it was hidden. I didn't know anything. All I knew was the package. As her world imploded, Cassie sent a series of panicked messages to her mother, Lisa, in Australia. But remarkably, failed to mention she'd been forced into it because of the threats against her family and fiancé. Not once in any of those messages do you mention that you'd been threatened mm -hmm. or that your family had been threatened. Why not? Because at that point, I didn't know if I could talk about what happened. Because I was told that everybody is involved. There was police here involved, there was airport staff involved. And so if I spoke about what happened, I'd be in a lot of trouble. But then as soon as I knew that I could trust people, that's when I, I told them what happened. But it was your mum we're talking about. Surely you could trust your mum. <laughs> yes, I trust my mum, but I also, I was worried that she would go to the wrong people. But the fact that I received photos of them while they were doing normal activities in Adelaide, that for me said they weren't safe. Judge John Jairo Zambraro was presiding on the day of Cassie's arrest. We spoke with him during our first trip to Colombia in May, after Cassie's story first broke. When Cassandra first appeared before you, was she nervous? No, la vi bastante tranquila. At the start, she was very calm, but that changed when we opened her bags. Once she learned she was going to jail, she became very upset. Critically, despite being interrogated for more than four hours, she also failed to mention to the judge Angelo's threats. And that again comes back to the fact that I didn't know who I could trust. But you're standing in front of a judge, there are police all around you, and you don't mention it once. Can you see why that's... I, I understand why it comes across as... Hard you to know, believe. ...changed her story or she's making up a story to protect herself. But it, it honestly came back down to... For me, I was... I don't swear. I was scared. I was scared senseless. It's an important point because her entire future now depends on proving those threats are real. In the weeks after her arrest, Cassie's Colombian lawyer, Orlando Heron, managed to negotiate a very generous plea deal. If she took full responsibility, sole responsibility, for her actions, Cassie would be sentenced to just six years in jail, probably out within two. But at the last minute, she reneged. When you talked to the judge and you failed to take full responsibility, you effectively blew up that plea deal. When I spoke to the judge, for me, I didn't know the judge wasn't, wasn't aware of that. And so, yes, in a way... And so, when I... so you misinterpreted what your legal team was saying? Yes, and... But Cassie, that's, that could be disastrous. And... It's, it's 
Bezo finance six months. But it, it, it means that it's now all or nothing. With a plea deal now off the table, Cassandra's fate will be decided by a single judge. If her lawyers can provide any evidence she and her family were threatened, she'll walk free. But if not, she'll be sentenced to at least 21 years and four months behind bars. Is there evidence? There is evidence. Hard evidence? Yes. The photos that you talked yes. about on WhatsApp? Mm -hmm. Emails, texts, are they on your phone? They're on your phone. But get this, in another useful twist in Cassie's story, she's told prosecutors she can't remember the pattern password that unlocks her phone. It means no one can open her instant messaging app, WhatsApp, and verify if the threatening messages and photos from the elusive Angelo really do exist. Is it true that you've forgotten the password? It's very true. I haven't used it for nearly six months. I'm not going to remember a pattern. Are you serious? You've forgotten the password? Yes. I mean, you think about it. I am, th I am thinking about <laughs> it. In fact, I'm sure. I don't know another millennial who has forgotten their password. Well, I'm sure if you were in prison for five months, you would forget it. Don't you think that's an incredibly convenient thing to have happened? Pretty much. If I knew the password and I've told my lawyer, I'd give it. But that's all it is. I, if I can't remember, I've got nothing to give them. Coming up, Cassie's past in South Australia catches up with her. There's a lot of porky pies going on here, isn't there? And finally, her biggest bombshell yet. Did somebody close to you encourage you to do it? That's next on 60 Minutes.